Hello there, my name's John Price, and this is a short video talking about the duties of the declarer in Hand of Bridge. Now, Act 1 in the Hand of a Bridge is all about the bidding, and the actors in that act are the opener, the responder, the overcaller, and the advancer. And as they play out Act 1, a contract is decided upon. But it's in Act 2 that the contract is actually played. And the person who plays it is the declarer. The declarer and their partner have won the contract, and now the declarer is going to have to play it. They get the privilege of playing their own hand and the hand of their partner. They're in charge of 26 cards. And being able to look at those 26 cards and decide which card is played should help the declarer to get the contract that Act 1 decided upon. But what are actually the duties of the declarer? When you first learn bridge, you would probably have been taught how to play rubber bridge. And when you decide that this is a really good game and you want to move on from just playing with uh, yourself and three friends, but you want it to be a little bit more social and you want to meet with a larger group of people playing bridge, then you probably advance to Chicago, Chicago Bridge. And both those games, the contract is very important to the declarer. The declarer, its main duty of the declarer, is to get that contract that was decided upon. But if you just want to advance a little bit more, take the game a little bit more seriously, you'll want to join a, a, a bridge club. And invariably, bridge clubs play a variant of bridge called duplicate bridge. And it may surprise you that because of the different scoring, of duplicate bridge, then the duty of the declarer is different. It is not getting the contract. The du in duplicate bridge, there's only one and only one duty for the declarer. It's get as many tricks as possible. Now that's a different strategy than playing Rubber Bridge and Chicago Bridge. In that game, you have to get the contract. Now, this doesn't mean that in Duplicate Bridge, the contract is unimportant. Certainly not. But once that's been decided upon, Act 1, when it comes to the declarer, that's all past history. And the declarer now has to concentrate on what they need to do in Act 2. And it's not get the contract. It is get as many tricks as possible. This can take several years for people to get their head round this. They'll play duplicate for a bridge for a long while, still thinking, I'm not sure if I understand this. And they do understand the game. It's just that they haven't fully understood what the declarer is required to do. You're in a contract of four spades. Doesn't that mean that you've got to get ten tricks? No, it doesn't. It tells you that spades are trumps. But what you have to do is to get as many tricks as possible. Ten is not enough. Eleven is not enough. If it's possible to make more. So you have to look at the cards and decide how many tricks can I make with spades as trumps. The contract is only of interest in telling what trumps are or whether you're playing no trumps. Surprisingly, when you've played in a club, playing duplicate bridge for a number of years, you'll probably get involved with the occasional times when the club decides to run a team bridge competition. 
And having spent all those several years in the club, getting your head round the new tactic, then when you play team bridge, all of a sudden things don't seem to be going right again. Do you know why? Because team bridge is scored in a different way to duplicate bridge, and lo and behold it, in team bridge, the declarer has to get the contract again, not just as the same as rubber bridge or Chicago bridge. Confusing or what? But for a lot of bridge players, they love playing duplicate bridge and team bridge. And so they are happy to just swap from one tactic to the other. And it's okay for them.